After months of an army offensive, eastern Ukraine looks devastated. Schools, hospitals, apartment blocks and houses are either badly damaged or completely destroyed. But as anti-government forces drive troops away, people are getting the chance to come out of hiding and to start rebuilding what's been wrecked. Well, local fighters are currently carrying out a military operation to protect the population that suffered greatly from the assault. Let's get more now from RT's Paula Slea, who is in Donetsk. Paula, what gains have the uh, anti-government forces made then? Well, the anti-government forces are gradually driving away the Ukrainian army from its previously held positions and from occupied towns and cities in the Lugansk and Donetsk regions. If you look at this map, the areas that are colored in orange are the areas that are now in the hands of the anti-government forces. They've also surrounded the port city of Mariupol and blocked off all ways out of the city. But there is, as far as we understand, no intention to either storm or raid the city at this stage. This comes as the humanitarian situation on the ground remains stark indeed. Humanitarian aid that has been supplied by Russia is being handed out in towns and cities across the east of this country. At the same time, the anti-government forces are organizing special trucks to ferry the aid to some of the hardest hit locations. This comes as people still hide inside their basements. My colleague Maria Fanoshina went to find out just how people are coping. What many feared could happen is happening. The constant bombardment of Lugansk has destroyed buildings, emptied streets and populated basements. Every time we visit, we find more people sheltering underground. A cold and humid room three meters down is the only place these people feel safe. This is a Soviet-era bomb shelter built during the Cold War, but until now it hadn't been used. Clashes are also intensifying around Lugansk. Kiev's goal is to surround the city and cut off the anti-government forces from their bases. When we travelled with the Russian humanitarian convoy to Lugansk, we were forced to take an alternative route to avoid the fighting. There is almost always a line of refugees at the border. People from the embattled areas surrounding Lugansk are among those seeking refuge from the fierce fighting which has overwhelmed their homes. Natalia says it took them several hours to escape. When the Barkov family celebrate the birthday of one of their younger members, they also give thanks that they have finally found some kind of safety. Andrei used to love playing war, like all boys of his age. Not anymore. Andrei shows me what he found in their backyard after another shelling. These tiny and lethal metal darts are sprayed from so-called flechette shells, which are internationally banned.
она же обстреливает своих жителей. Я как бы до этого всего я бы гордилась тем, что я украинка, то что я живу на Украине. Теперь не, не хочу быть. Мне стыдно такой паспорт носить. Если честно, стыдно. Kiev's large-scale military operation here in eastern Ukraine has lasted almost five months so far. As more destruction is caused and the casualties rise, people's pain feeds the anger. And many fear when the guns fall silent, Ukraine will not be able to overcome the consequences of what has happened here. Rifil Shnarty in eastern Ukraine.